imponderable thought that Jesus Christ never had a beginning. He is simply there. The absolute reality with which we reckon. We must rise to the supremacy of his eternality. While all the universe, including this building in your body and this earth and all the galaxies are fragile, contingent, like a shadow in comparison comparison to the substance of Jesus Christ. We must know the supremacy of his never-changing constancy. Oh, to have virtues that never change, a character whose commitment is constant yesterday, today, and forever. Let us know the supremacy of his constancy. And let us know the supremacy of his knowledge that makes the Library of Congress look like a match box and makes all the information on the Internet look like a 1940s farmer's almanac and makes all of quantum physics and everything that Stephen Hawking has ever dreamed look like a first grade reader. We must know the supremacy of the knowledge of our Lord. We must know the supremacy of his wisdom that has never been perplexed by any problem whatsoever, nor can he be counseled by any person or any being in the universe. We must know the supremacy of his authority. All authority is mine in heaven and on earth and under the earth. No change. All authority. Changing times and seasons, removing kings, setting up kings, doing according to his will in the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. No one can stay his hand or say to him, what have you done? We must know the supremacy of his providence, without which not a single bird in the extended reaches of the Amazon forest has ever fallen off of any limb, and without which not one hair turns white or black. We must know the providence of Jesus. We must know the supremacy of his word, which upholds the universe by the word of his power. All the galaxies, molecules, atoms, and subatomic reality nobody has yet dreamed of down there where no one has yet looked. We must know the supremacy of his power to walk on water and cleanse lepers and heal the lame. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Abundant Grace Ministries, our midweek, um, I was going to say service, but uh, our midweek stream. <laughs> <laughs> right. Our midweek stream where we've been going over Timothy Keller's book, uh, The Meaning of Marriage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's been epic, I would say. The comments have been great. It's so great to see all of you guys' comments and uh, all of the participation in, in the uh, chat. So I'll be in there, um, as well as uh, Pastor Jonathan, he'll be in there. Right. Um, got a lot of heavy stuff again this week, so I would imagine that it's gonna cause some, um, not controversy, but interest. Right. And, and so uh, we're looking forward to that. Let me say again, welcome to Abundant Grace Ministries where we always, Endeavor to do two things, that is exalt Christ. And to enhance relationships. Thank you all for joining us. Um, we're going to get started and get into it because all of these chapters have been so yeah, long. Very long. But <laughs> <laughs> so we know we're not going to finish today, mm -hmm. but um, we, we want to get into it, make sure we can hit uh, some of the more prominent points here right, right. Um, at the same time. Um, before I pray, is anything come to your mind? Um want to keep sister tony in prayer guys yes uh, yes she took off and she went to to pick bird on us but um want to let her know that we love her and that we're going to miss her um and you guys just keep her in prayer you know her health is a, is an issue and uh that uh sh you know she gets connected i'm sure she has a church already but that you know she gets connected and that the lord might continue to grow her faith in the lord jesus so we're going to miss her Oh, amen. I, when I thought about that, I, I thought all the way back to uh, nursery class, singing those, uh, <laughs> right. singing those <laughs> early, right. uh, 
uh, Christian songs with with Antoni. Yeah. So um, I think we don't realize where the the seeds we plant, mm, um, how right. they'll grow up into trees. But uh, we love Antoni, and uh, we're gonna gonna miss her while she's while she's gone. Right. 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 But we live in a great time. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. she'll be, yeah, she'll be uh, able to uh, yeah, right. tune in and and comment. So that's good. Let's go ahead and pray. The last thing I'll, I'll say is that uh, Abe already shouted out his wife, um, but she is learning how to run the stream. Right. So uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome Thank to you. the team. We're going. Uh, uh, this is the first run, but we're going to put <laughs> her put her to the real real yeah. deal on okay. Sunday. <laughs> You're going to do a lot more clicking on Sunday. <laughs> so uh, this is a nice practice time. We appreciate your dedication yeah. and your willingness to learn. So. Uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We just thank you and praise you for bringing us here. Dear Lord, we ask that as we go through this lesson that you would um, bless the words, uh, uh, bring to our minds yeah. all of the uh, the concepts and, and um, illustrations and, and the things that will reach someone, dear Lord, as we um, try to commit to one of the uh, central pillars of this uh, community, and that is to enhance relationships, and we know that um, the bedrock of Christian relationships and even all of society comes from this union um, that you have ordained in marriage, so we ask that you would strengthen all of the uh, marriages connected to abundant grace and every single uh, person that sits down to watch this stream, I'm asking that you would bless them and uh, knit the concepts to their heart, dear Lord. Um, encourage someone to go home and um, through the Spirit put these things into practice, dear Lord. I'm asking that you develop um, strong, godly marriages that will help us to produce uh, a strong and godly children, dear Lord, as we contribute to a strong and godly ministry. Dear Lord, we just thank you and praise you for all you've done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 All right. Um, so this week is uh, chapter three. Um, it is entitled The Essence of Marriage. Yeah. Um, like I said before, kind of in the intro, I was like, this is uh, some powerful stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, the gospel just kind of illuminates every part of our lives. Right, right, and right. this chapter is no different. And mm -hmm. I, I, I just really like the way Timothy Keller writes. Right. And so... Um, we're going to get into it, but I, I think he, he did an, another good job in this um, chapter. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, I want to uh, kind of speak to this idea. I know he's going to get right into it, but the essence of marriage um, becomes this kind of twofold thing where he's talking about uh, the desire mm -hmm. and duty that we as uh, married spouses um, express in our loving relationship. Yeah, you know, he talks about the... Uh, there's all there's often a, a, a false dichotomy right uh, placed before a marriage and I think in Christian marriage um, we're able to, by the power of the spirit like we had in the last by, like we saw in the last chapter to be able to to see a harmony between um romantic passion and uh faithful selfless duty right right um I think that's kind of what he's going to lead us towards, and that's our prayer for you guys, that as you uh, listen to us, that the Lord Jesus um, and the Spirit of God will work on your heart so that um, these things might live in your marriage. I just want to encourage the all those couples that are uh, tuning in, do not do not allow this just to be a good reading or mm -hmm. even good discussion, mm -hmm. but uh, take it from the, the your head and let it work itself to your hearts so that uh, you're growing personally in your love for the Lord Jesus and your um, desire to make your marriage work That's right. and also you know uh, work, working hard uh, to um, to honor the Lord inside of your marriages so I just encourage you guys to do that don't don't just read man <laughs> we do right. that so much don't just read let's 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 do some applying to our marriages man that's right okay so um, I didn't say before but go ahead and click the like button also, go ahead and share it uh, on your timeline or with some of your friends. I appreciate some of you already tagged some of your friends here um, in the uh, chat. So we appreciate that. Again, it helps us um, grow. We've been growing 
uh, digitally. So um, go ahead and help us do that. Um, the essence of marriage. Um, he points out Ephesians chapter five, uh, verse 31, mm -hmm. and um, which is a quotation yeah. of Genesis chapter two, yes. verse 24. It reads, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be united to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Amen. Amen. Okay, so the first section is this uh, section called Love and the Piece of Paper. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I think probably to many people's mind comes the concept that he's going to illuminate mm -hmm. here, and mm -hmm. that is that uh, you might hear someone as, as they speak detractingly of marriage is like, why do I need a piece of paper to show that I love you or show that I'm committed? Yeah. marriage ain't nothing but a contract or or, or you hear those right, those right. kind of things right and i like the, i like the fact that um he kind of deconstructs that whole myth mm. that is just a piece of paper and really points out uh, beautifully the selfishness of that um that point of view that it it does not want to take the the next step of exclusivity it does not want right. to take the next step of of losing themselves for the good of another, like it's all about keeping options open. Oh, and, gotta keep and, those options open. <laughs> and I, I think that uh, I push back. We, I'm glad that he pushed back against that because that's a, still today a cultural narrative that's pushed that mm -hmm. marriage is nothing but a piece of paper. Um, when uh, inside of that paperless union that a lot of people have, there's no obligation. There, right. There's no requirement. And you can just walk away, and that's the point of it. That's the point of it. When the sex dries up, you walk away. When the fun dries up, you walk away. Um, mm. And he pushes back against that narrative and says, no, um, it's something about that. It's something about that paperless union uh, that is very selfish, man, and, and uh, lacking uh, true true commitment. Right. He 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 again goes to this idea. The uh, idea of marriage as the piece of paper it again goes to that individual mindset right, right. Um, that our culture cultivates. And we go into it's the me marriage. Right. right? right. It's the uh, the marriage becomes another phase of life at which I develop myself. Yeah. Like so this, this, he uh, he continually brings up this idea of a consumer right, relationship, consumer. a consumer marriage. What is it doing for me? And once it stops uh, providing benefits for me, uh, the benefits that I desire, then I'm just going to walk away and I'm going to then engage in this same sort of uh, quasi relationship with someone else. Um, and, and I'll just I, I think that the enemy um, just kind of take it just a little bit deeper than, than just marriage. But the enemy uh, wants to, in our culture, deconstruct the idea of monogamy right he wants to tear down the idea of um of traditional marriage between a man and a and a woman and so um i, I think this is purposeful this idea i, I remember I, we're going to get there but towards the toward the end of the section we'll cover tonight uh this this woman uh uh, one of the commenters on that on that uh, article right yeah it's just a whole diatribe of how we need to throw off the shackles of oppressive right, uh, right. Uh, monogamy mm -hmm. and I'm like man that's ultimately what all of this is about it's about destroying this biblical institution that is the very fabric of um, of society in general oh, no right. doubt yes yes um, we'll definitely get into that um, I want to move forward I guess a little bit because this is kind of his introduction to it and he he really he's really setting the uh, foundation mm -hmm. um, he says the Bible uh, speaks of love it it primarily uh, primarily not by how much you want to receive but how much you are willing to give of yourself mm -hmm. and he asks these very poignant questions how much are you willing to lose for the sake of this person how much of your freedom are you willing to forsake how much of your precious time emotion and resources are you willing to invest in this person? Mm -hmm. um, and then he, he kind of wraps it all up when he says this. He says, to say I don't need a piece of paper to love you is basically to say my love for you has not reached the marriage level. Right. Man, that that's, I think he just kind of knocks the knees, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> knocks the knees right out of that argument, man. You got you to gotta think there's something about that argument. There's something about that that frame of thinking that is very selfish and, mm -hmm. and that is 
lacking a desire to really make this a, a exclusive union. That's right. Right. It uh, keeps keeps all options open. Right. Mm. Keeps the, the 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 back door unlocked. Yeah, so I don't you know. Can it's, sneak it's, on out. it's a strange it's a strange feeling. I mean, in the meantime, you're still getting your life very entangled with mm-hmm, another mm-hmm. individual. But I think it's the whole concept of me and, right. and it's like I don't mind entangling my life, but right. I also want to have the back door <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> just yes. in case I need to detangle, right? Right. Um, so th- the whole point, and he gets, th- again, remember this section, this overall section is, this chapter is the essence of marriage. He, he points this out, and then we'll move on. If we think of love primarily yeah. as emotional yeah. desire yeah. and not as active, committed service, we end up pitting duty and desire duty and desire against each other in a way that is unrealistic and destructive. And, and he's going to argue in the in the book that he's going to argue later in the chapter that um, like duty done rightly, duty done rightly, right, um, and consistently is going to breed passion, right? Mm-hmm. It, it, mm-hmm. Like he, mm-hmm. like this 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 idea just to put your work boots on and to work at this thing and to give yourself up for the good of your mate is going to do exactly the opposite of what the culture says it's going to do. It's not going to uh, minimize passion. Right. It's not going to throw um, this idea of romantic joy out of the window, but it's going to deepen it. It's, right. going, to, it's going to make it palpable. And I, I just think that's something that we really need to give our, our, our hearts to. He's going to, he's going to do a good job of explaining yeah. it too. Okay, the uh, overly subjective view uh, of love, (laughs) and I thought about this, I'm like, uh, all of our books have kind of talked about these subjective topics and how we uh, tend to think of them subjectively, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and usually that leads to to error, (laughs) right? (laughs) right? Um, But uh, love, uh, I guess the overarching thing is love is objective and which speaks to the duty, Mm -hmm. Um, but here's where he he points out this uh, subjective um idea of love displays itself in the way we understand the physical relationship between um i i would say between husband and wife but really he's talking about at all <laughs> right right <laughs> <laughs> um this is particularly uh true when it comes to sex he says mm-hmm. um this uh he says this uh this thoroughly subjective understanding of love as a passionate feeling mm-hmm. and often this quickly leads um into a vicious cycle. If mm-hmm. you won't make love unless you are in a romantic mood at the very same time as your spouse, mm-hmm. then sex will not happen that often. Right. This can dampen and quench your partner's interest in mm-hmm. sex, which means there will be even fewer opportunities. Right. Therefore, if you never have sex unless there is great mutual passion, there will be fewer and fewer times of mutual passion. Man, I... <laughs> He's gonna he's gonna use his wife and, and himself as an he illustration did. Did. Um, a little later, um, but it's just he's pointing out to us this this idea that if we're gonna give ourselves to to not being selfish with our bodies, right, right, that me marriage again, saying well I don't feel like it, but understanding that you have an obligation to your mate mm. and that you ought to desire their pleasure, mm. right. Yeah. And, and so you push yourself past that subjective idea that I'm not in the mood. But I love that he says that, man, eventually, like, your love is going to be such that even when you're not in the mood, it won't take much to get you in the mood to enjoy one another. Right. Um, because, like, um, that love is ripened and is deepened because yes. you push past the subjective, right? You push yes. past the subjective and you say, you know what, my body is here not just for my personal enjoyment, but for the enjoyment mm. of my mate to pleasure them. We don't we don't think like that in marriage. You know what I'm saying? We mm. don't even think like that through the at the during the sex act. Like we have to be about this idea of selflessness. And I I just keep that's being driven home in my own heart right. from reading a book. He keeps making me look in look in the mirror and say in my marriage is my is my heart to honor the Lord by serving Kim right. and not caring uh, even if that is not reciprocated to me. Wow. Yeah, and that was that's the thing. So um, he's pointing out if you start in this um, 
the selfish view mm -hmm. um, of these this over emotional right. feeling <laughs> that you initially connect to the to the physical moment mm -hmm. um, then the idea is that that's the natural uh, uh, following right? right like whenever I have this overwhelming emotional right. feeling right. that's when I should give of myself uh, 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 physically and, and, it's, and it's partly because a lot of us have had like those uh, outside of maybe outside of the marital mm -hmm. con, con, um, the confines of marriage we've had those amazing sex sexual experiences that were so right. electric because you somewhere you ain't got no business <laughs> sleep with somebody you ain't got no business correct, correct, and correct. all of that urgency and all of that works itself up to an awesome experience and then that's what we think of when we think about sex and about it being great right. and awesome when really to look at your mate and to understand that they are pleasure that they are at this moment jo uh, mm. joying in in you like that is awesome that that is ultimately what we should be striving after as opposed to those those sinful things that flood our mind where we have this subjective idea that sex has to be uh it has to be like urgent and mm. it has to have these idea of of sizzle you know yeah 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 so so that 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 feeling is twofold. It's mm -hmm. not only the physical feeling of having sex, but you're also on, on an adventure. Right, 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 <laughs> so, right. So well, that's all what, of those emotions that, that yeah, come all of it comes together at the same time. And then that's what we that's what we that's that's when we say, Well, the sex life is boring. Well, brother, mm -hmm. this ain't the, the thrill of the hunt. The, that, no, this this is <laughs> yeah. not what that is. <laughs> that's right. So um he he ends this section very and uh, just an interesting thing and i think like this is what um i try to explain to people like you know who m might not be married and just this whole idea um he says the best sex makes you want to weep tears of joy and not bask in the glow of a good performance yeah, I thought that was a little prosaic. Um, <laughs> maybe I like words. I, thought it was I a like words. Romantic. Uh, I don't know. Maybe y'all in the comments can. Uh, I don't know about weepy tears uh, uh, of joy, but I get what he's getting at. It's not about. It's a different feeling. Yeah, it, it's, it's a, a di very. It's a, it's a different, different <laughs> kind of satisfaction. It's a different kind of satisfaction to know that your mate is, is has been pleased and is. But but the whole point of the the, the sex conversation, I, I don't want us to lose it. In the particulars, right, like, right? We might be doing in the comments. No, it's not the particulars, <laughs> no, <they okay>. but <laughs> but it's this idea of this subjective idea of of love, and he's using sex as an illustration, Correct. right? He, he, the sex is his illustration. Yeah. Like we we are only wanting it because it because we want it to please please us. us. We want it yes. to have, and so we don't engage in it with our mate because it doesn't. Because we don't want to, and that's kind of what he's pushing back against. No, mm. no, it, yeah. it's not this subjective idea. No, you, you have a duty. Well, well I think that's that's the implication, <laughs> right? Right, right, right? He's really fighting against this emotional sense and and, and, and connecting it right to the physical moment, right? Um, but he's saying it's it's desire and duty, right? And and then uh, and each one kind, it's, it goes hand yeah, in hand. Yeah. It goes and, hand and in hand. He's he's highlighting the fact that we. Um, in our culture, have placed all the emphasis on desire, on desire, mm -hmm. both in relationships and even in sex in particular. Right. Okay. So um, he takes this theme and then moves it into this idea of consumer or covenant. Right. Um, and I, I don't know how fast we're moving, but we're going we're gonna to see how right. far we can. Um, consumer or, or covenant. So we talked about this idea already. So this consumer marriage mm -hmm. is more about us than it is about our, our mm -hmm, spouse. Mm -hmm. um, but in this portion, he highlights that marriage is a covenant and it's not just uh, um, and biblically that comes with uh, other implications and not just, um, you know, I signed up, I signed up for it. You right. Know? I, I love this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, uh, if I could point out this highlight. Yeah. It says uh, in a covenant, uh, the good of the relationship, take the relationship takes precedence over the immediate needs yes. of the individual. Mm -hmm. This is uh, this idea of covenant is is deeper than this idea of how I feel subjectively, the good of the relationship. Mm 
mm-hmm. takes precedent over the immediate needs of the individual. And then in the sex illustration, you say, you know what, I'm going to give my body because this is for the good of the relationship. Right. It's for the good of our of our union together, even if I'm not I'm not filled with sizzle. Correct. <laughs> right. And uh, and, and then a uh, part of this. Uh, this covenant, um, he pointed out that the uh, the word is like literally like being glued. Mm-hmm. No, well, the cleave. He talked yeah, about cleaving. My wife um, liked that. <laughs> it's to probably be glued together. Mm-hmm. Um, this idea of, let me see. I wonder if is I that in this thing? Maybe not. When I, I I'm pretty sure no, I had no, it. No, I, I had it. Had it highlighted, but no, no, um, it's definitely in there. I highlighted it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but this this idea of covenant, and maybe that's going to take me to the next section because mm-hmm. he's like this covenant comes with a vertical and, and a horizontal, horizontal a- right. aspect. Um, the horizontal is obviously what we experience right. between ourselves and and our spouse. Mm-hmm. But um, I thought this was a powerful it illustration was powerful section, because yeah. he, he was saying that when you st- you stand up there and you make those vows. You have these the questions and 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 then there's these statements that mm-hmm. you uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, assent to. Right. Um, the questions are more along the lines of of these proclamations yeah, yeah, that, that part, yeah. he's like you're not really talking to each other. Right. Um, you're talking to the minister and all <laughs> the people that are around. You yeah. are literally making a vow before God mm-hmm. to commit your life to this to this person. And, and like even I've. I've uh, as a pastor, I've done a few weddings, uh, and uh, my my in laws are celebrating 20 years, and so we're going to be able to help them to renew their vows, which is pretty sweet. Um, but what happens in those in those uh, marriage ceremonies mm-hmm. is, yeah, like you purposely like the like the um, before you do the vows, there's a point where he's going to ask you a bunch of questions. Uh, the minister asks you a con- bunch yeah. of questions. Will you have this woman, this man, to be your wife? Uh, will you make uh, your promise to her in all love, honor, and duty to live with her, cherish her according uh, according to the ordinance of God in the holy bond of marriage? They're looking forward because they're mm-hmm. not necessarily saying that to each other. I love when he said that. Uh, you're saying that to God. That's the vertical. I, that's the vertical nature of what's of going on there. Your, uh, of what's happening in yeah. that moment. You guys are uh, horizontally being joined together in the presence of God. Right. Like you can't get, and so when you decide to break that, when you decide to to decide to dismantle that, understand that covenant included God as well. Right, right. right. It's it's a little, it's a little Uh. bit more (laughs) intense. So we go, we should probably walk the aisle a little more cautiously with a little more solemnity because Mm -hmm. this is a weighty thing that's happening when we actually marry. I mean, that's the thought. I have not only promised myself. To my wife, but right. I promised God that I would that stay, I was, that I would stay with her <laughs> right. and do whatever it takes to 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 stay with her. And That's then, like right in the vow portion, we say, uh, "What uh, I I take you to be my lawful and wedded husband, and I do promise and covenant before God and these witnesses mm. to be your loving and faithful wife." Uh, and then he says, "And." Plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health. It all kind of sounds a little yeah. different depending on what <laughs> right. or what uh, denomination you're you're a part of. Right. But the whole point is like you're saying, you've already told God that you are down for this person, and now that's you're just looking right. them in the eye and saying, "Yo, I'm down for you," oh, and, and that's heavy. Like, and we, and I think the the point of the section, Rob, if you don't mind me uh, yeah, saying, the point of the section is to get us to see that this isn't casual. No. Not at all. This isn't like, <laughs> and that's what the paperless union does. It's casual. You can just say, man, all right, we about to, we about to end it. You know what I'm saying? I go find somebody else to live with and 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 have these passionate sexual encounters with. But when we do covenant, right. this is deep. Th- right. th- this is this is me joining myself by oath to someone before the Lord God of all creation. Right. 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 Yes. Um, I think that is what he's getting at. And he kind of sums it up at the end where he says, uh, you think of this marriage uh, moment as an A-frame on top of a a, a foundation. Right. Um, You have the the husband, the wife Mm -hmm. supporting each other at the top. But Mm -hmm. underneath it all is this foundation built upon on right. God, on the vows they make to God. Right, right, right. And if that foundation is missing, then uh, the whole frame well, is all going to be all trouble. up. <laughs> you're in trouble. Um, okay, love and law is the next one. So he really 
is hitting on these these two. So you have this vertical and horizontal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and you mm-hmm. have this desire and duty. Mm-hmm. And you have this love and, and, and law here. Right, right. So he really uh, speaks against the, uh, I guess what I'll say, this 20th century liberated <laughs> idea of, of love and right. passion. He, he quotes the philosopher Bertrand Russell. Um, let me read a little bit of that right, right, because I think it really captures um, so much of the ideas we have in society. We don't even know where they come from. <laughs> no. But they come from people like Bertrand yeah, Russell. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so intellectual elites. Uh, right. um, what did he say? While uh, conceding, British philosopher Bertrand Russell made early 20th century arguments for the expression of sexual love outside of marriage while conceding that we should not disassociate sex from serious emotional and from feelings of affection, emotion and feelings of of affection, he nevertheless argued that sexual activity should be marked by intense passion and romantic delight, and that can flourish only as long as it is free and spontaneous. (laughs) It tends to be killed by the thought it is a duty. This thought is now considered common sense, yeah, namely everybody. that love <laughs> must uh, be the response to spontaneous desire, never a response to legal oath Yeah, and then or you promise. go down like to the end of the last paragraph, mm-hmm. I mean the next paragraph, it mm-hmm. says, it is uh, talking about a covenant relationship is not just intimate despite being legal, it is a relationship that is more intimate because it's legal. Right. Uh, right. Like, like that's... Like, like you, you're thinking that because you actually make it official, be, you mm-hmm. put a seal on it, you make this covenant that is going to take the int- intimacy away. But you're investing yourself into it, though. Like, like when you go in that covenant, Rob, this is a selfless thing that you're that you're oh, engaging yes. in. So it's much more intimate. Uh, it, it, it doesn't dampen the intimacy at all, but it increases it because I'm invested. You know what Yo, I'm saying? Right, right, in, right. In a crazy way. <laughs> right. Um, I think you're hitting on this. He says, the willingness to enter a binding covenant far from stifling love is a way to, to, is a way of enhancing, even supercharging it. A wedding promise is proof that your love is actually at marriage level as well as a radical act of self-giving all by itself. Right. Um, And I, I, I love how, you know, I guess contemporary society has really flipped that on its head. Mm-hmm. Instead, we look at the we look at the legal aspect of it as almost as coercion, mm-hmm. and you know, mm-hmm. and why should I be coerced into right into this union? Yeah. Well, no, that's not. It's, it's the flip side. Is that I am committed so much right. that I I, right. I, I I bound myself not only emotionally and physically, but legally, like bounding myself to you yeah. in the presence of. Uh, yeah. uh, of God and all of those things, but, but it's hard to really wrap your mind around like this biblical idea of covenant mm-hmm. um, when it comes to marriage. When you are, when, when your worldview is based in this idea that's that, right, uh, w- a self actualization of uh, me first of of consumer um, is really you don't see what Timothy is saying without really the power of the Holy Spirit. That I am actually my joy in marriage is going to go up. When right. I solidify it by means of the covenant and then I give myself away while I'm inside of it. That's mm-hmm. that's that's antithetical to what our culture no. is about. Is like no. <laughs> and that's <clears throat> this is I love like when Jesus talks uh in the gospels, when he talks about king kingdom ethics, he's always turning uh the way that the world sees the world the way the world's narrative on his head, right? Right, because because we think of power, like just as an example, Jesus when he talks about power, we think it's like lording over people. He's like, no, <laughs> man, like, in 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 the kingdom, uh, uh, power is about self giving. Power is about uh, service, and he's doing the same thing here. You think marriage is about you, nah, bro? When a, a kingdom understanding of marriage is about giving yourself away for the good of the other person. Like, the kingdom is way different than this world, and we can't, as Christians, uh, operate on a a non-biblical worldview and expect to get the results the Bible promises to us. Right. Um, So as he uh, continues, um, he talks about this idea of the promise of future love. Yeah, and so we kind of we I mean all of these things are kind of running know, running to it. running together, but this promise of, of future love is um, it is a way 
that brings security to the yeah. the uh <laughs> to yeah. the to the passion of modern um <laughs> relationships right, right. It, the, that's the whole thing they burn up in a in a blaze of yeah. glory yeah. and then they fizzle out, <laughs> they fizzle yeah. out and it's so so insecure you're mm -hmm. in and out of relationships mm -hmm. um soon as that those sparks go as soon as, soon as those <laughs> sparks go away right yeah, yeah, yeah. um but this this promise of future love is that sparks are no sparks right um, whatever my past, whatever your past, no. whatever comes, yeah. whatever comes, yeah. like none of us can predict the future. Right. But we know. I, I can tell you one thing: <laughs> some bad times are gonna yeah. happen. Yeah. But no matter what, right uh, I'm gonna love you. I'm right. gonna continue right to love you. Yeah. And, and I love that he says that wedding vows are not a declaration. Like so, so we always think of um, the 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 wedding moment. Uh, what Sister Tonisha just got married. Shout out to her and her husband, Michael. All right. right. Congratulations. Shout out to them. Um, but we, we, like just even watching them give their vows, uh, we we look at it and we and we're thinking to ourselves, oh, they're telling us how much they love each other now. Yeah. Okay, that's assumed, right? <laughs> but what they're saying is, yo, this, we gonna love each other in the, in future. the future. You in know what I'm future, saying? Man. Like like we gonna love each other when we don't necessarily like each other. Wow. You know what I'm saying? We wow. we're going to. That's what's happening in mm -hmm. the. Uh, in, in the wedding moment, we are, uh, I just read the rest of the quote, wedding vows are not a declaration of present love, but a mutual bonding promise of future love. That's right. That's, That's right. It's heavy. Like, it, it, we're not in that moment saying, oh, I love, you. and he talks about that, how in, in these people, where they're writing their own vows, they're, they're focusing on how they feel about each other, how they feel about that person in the present. Mm -hmm. But the the vows that you usually find in Christians uh in, in Christian services, it's like saying what you're going to do in the future. This idea that this covenant is so binding that I'm going to love you. I, I love you now and I'm all gushy now, but mm -hmm. When you probably put on 10 to 15 pounds, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you probably uh -huh. ain't as cute as you used to be, yo, I'm I'm rocking with you. No matter what. No it matter is, what. Till the wheels fall off. Right. You know what and I'm I think having that having that long term view will sometimes carry you through the the the, the temporary yeah. moments. Uh my my advice to uh to people who are getting married is is learn to let it go yeah because mm -hmm. uh, you're in this for a lifetime a you will time. look back i mean i've only been married eight years but you will look back on the arguments you had and yeah. be like man what was we yeah. talking and about why, why, <laughs> why, 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 so why was that such it? a big deal right. that uh you know that you go to battle over that right. so so uh that's always my um and then like i, I love rob he because he, I've, I've read um um Homer's Iliad. That's oh, that's Homer's yeah, Iliad. Is, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. is that Homer's Iliad? Um, no, no, it's the next one. Um, but it's by Homer. Uh, it, but it's the idea of uh, the Odyssey. The Odyssey, yes, the Odyssey. And, and so Ulysses, uh, he's getting ready to go through mm -hmm. the sirens, mm -hmm. and he knows, like, yo, I'm going to be temporarily insane. So you know, uh, I'm a stuff y'all ears so y'all don't hear the siren. But I'm gonna tie myself to the mask. So. Uh, well, I, that's what drives the boat, right? Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. gonna tie myself to it, and no matter what I say, don't listen to me because because <laughs> when the when the, uh, when the uh, right. sirens when they when they're doing their singing their little song is gonna make me crazy. And he says like, "Yo, what the covenant does? It ties what this oath, these vows, this covenant does. It ties us to the mass of our marriage. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So come what may, like, no, I am not letting go. I'm not going to make a." Uh, a, a permanent decision in the midst of this temporary turmoil. That's right. Because right. I'm tied to the mass. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Um, so I, I mean, I'm, I, I must have been getting really into this because I went through this portion here and not even uh, highlight. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pick up my pen to highlight. But he really, uh, he goes through the words of Paul and of Jesus and how divorce is only yeah. outlined for um, um, infidelity and for. I, I, uh, what do we call it today? Uh, they call it a uh, abandon uh, abandonment of yeah. affection. Uh, <laughs> is what we call but, but it. But I, I just I, mm -hmm. when I'm reading this, and even I'm thinking about, it, I'm trying to uh, trying to really like analyze why he's going in the direction why that he's that? going, and he's yeah, trying to get us to see the weightiness of covenant, mm -hmm. like want to get us to see like 
this is why oaths are important. This is why I go from paperless to take the next step, right? right? And to actually throw myself into a covenant relationship is because it, it's going to bind me there. It's going to keep me there. And then he says, like, uh, he talks about divorce. Because he says, oh, this ain't something. These covenants ain't something you jump in and jump out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Sometimes we say, oh, man. You know, it ain't working for me. Irreconcilable differences. And and y'all know, like, real talk, y'all know that the 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 divorce rate inside of the church, it, it mirrors that outside of the <laughs> church. So ain't like we doing a good job of what we're talking about. Like, we jumping in and out of covenants like God wasn't there when y'all actually said mm-hmm. what y'all said, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to, I'm oh, not going yeah, to, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> so, but, no. but he points to the fact that it, this is, like, divorce is is not what he desires mm. uh and he points to the fact that he, it was given because of the hardness of our hearts mm-hmm. and even inside of that god is gracious that he gives us exempt clauses right? right he gives us ways in which that that covenant can be terminated um but the whole point is that those are very few mm-hmm. right because the the folks of oh. jesus they was like oh man she she burnt the toast yeah. three days in a <laughs> row so <laughs> i'm good uh, right, right, you know, right. and i'm just going and when you left a, a woman back mm-hmm. then, it wasn't like, you know, it, it was economically yes. impactful right. on her. Like, right, it was right. Listen, Jesus gave you one, and Paul Paul's like two, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because Jesus yeah. was like uh, uh, infidelity. Inf- infidelity. Right. Paul was like if you willful. Yeah, uh, will, I, I think uh, he calls it willful desertion. Yeah. Where the person yeah. leaves and then. If Paul they just says, don't want to be with you, yeah. I mean, and they leave you, I guess. And Paul you know. says you're not, you're not bound. Yes. And, um, and I, I think. I've heard some pastors try to argue out of the exception clauses because they they want to argue for once married, um, oh, uh, uh, what marriage, uh, no divorce and no remarriage. So you, if you marry, there's no divorce and no remarriage. That's not biblical, oh, in my man, estimation. And I know some. Of my, I'm sure. Some, I know some solid I'm sure, dudes. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to hit on that again. <laughs> I, I know some solid dudes that that kind of believe that way. Right. But what I want to say is, like, if you're in covenant relationships and that person has. Um, done some of the things we talked about willful desertion um and uh, infidelity um and their heart is hard in such a way that they're not repentful they're not repentant mm. of what they've done god is giving you a way out and he says at the end don't be shamed mm. don't be shamed if you are that person that has been offended in the covenant god is giving you grace to go ahead and move on and then even uh, find joy in another covenantal relationship wow. Right, that's so I, important, and that's I mean, and that, that's that's grace, man. That's that's amazing, <laughs> and I just want that to sizzle in somebody's spirit, mm-hmm. uh, like my man Country Wayne said, because somebody needs to hear that. That's right, that's right. Um, so he gets into the uh, the power of promising, and we 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 kind of hit on this. He says, uh, "Vows keep us from simply running out too quickly. Mm-hmm, 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 they mm-hmm. give love a chance and create stability. So the feelings of love always." Uh, very fitful and fragile in the early months and years can grow strong and deep mm-hmm. over time. And um, as I was thinking about that, I was like, man, this this idea of this love and commitment becomes almost like an investment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and if you know anything about investing, um, w- you often ask yourself, why am I doing this? <laughs> And, and when you first start, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, man, yeah. I could spend that money on something else. <laughs> the point is it it, it yeah. grows more. It, it right. grows. The, the seeds you're planting uh, right now, um, those seeds are going to be growing like crazy mm-hmm. if you would just uh, continue to invest, continue to, uh, yeah. to leave it there. And uh, Is this here where he goes back? I don't know if he goes back mm-hmm. to this idea that if you stick with it for uh, – I, I, I was looking earlier. for that, but yeah. it, but yeah. this is that same that same, same idea. Principle, it's right? like uh, what is a sixty six percent of people if they just stick it out yeah. within five years, they will they will be in a good place. You'll be in a good place, right? And um, what I liked about this, uh, like he was well, going to quote that one guy uh, in uh, the book, the troubling, uh, the controlling, uh, controlling the unpredictable, right. uh, the power of promising, and. Uh, I highlighted here, uh, Smee answers, um, like, that we are largely who we become through making wise promises and keeping oh, them. Yes. Right, yes. right, right, right. He, he points that, like, uh, and, and I was I was really struggling to kind of get, me and my mama were really trying to, like, dive into, because he got really philosophical at this point, right? He did. <laughs> but he was talking about, like, um, like, keeping these promises is in some way, 
uh, identity forming, I- I'm mm-hmm. supposing, or ident- mm-hmm. uh, identity uh, revealing. I don't know what I don't know how to say it, but there's something deep happening with us when we make these vows and then we keep them, right? That's right. Because he's right. going to go to that um that that uh what is it a play by Robert Bolt? Yeah. And and he basically the dude the dude says like yo if if I promise something and basically I don't keep it, it's like water in my hand. Yes. And, and, and it, yes. like, and once I open it, I lose it. I lose who I am by not keeping the oath that I make. Just right. keep, really drill it home constantly, y'all. This idea that these promises that we make, they're character forming, and and, and they are uh, the nuts and the bolts of of keeping mm. us from running out. Uh, because we get scared or we get offended or hurt. No, we got to be uh, locking our these, these vows. They lock us in. You know mm, what I'm saying? That's right. And um, I mean, I, I got that idea too. They the the promises we make and keep become the formation of oh, uh, identity right, of right, who you right, are. Right. Um, I mean, you can even think about that in the marriage context, yeah. right? I mean, it, it, going through those hard times. Sticking to the to right. the vows, you emerge something different on the other side. Yeah, because you, be, you become. Like, yeah, my wife has been married to like five different five men, different, <laughs> and they all myself. You know They're what I'm all saying? Me, right? They all myself mm-hmm. because like 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 kind of like you were saying, like this is this is shaping who I am. This That's is shaping right. my character. It's actually uh, making me more like more like my Lord to uh, uh, to to make a vow and then to, and then to work vigorously to keep oh, man. it. You said that because I was thinking about that while I was like <laughs> um, Jesus Christ did the work yeah. in, in love right. and commitment, right. uh, uh, desire and duty. Right. Um, right. This idea mm-hmm. to love us took the work of uh, sacrifice and Calvary yeah. and uh, that's no that's no easy so I no, mean enough that he prayed the way the way he did. And, and then Rob even to think about it like this like what we see on Calvary is the manifestation of, of a plan the triune God had before the foundation of the world. Right. That's the depth of his love for us. There was a promise that he made uh, that he was going to um, that he was going to gather people and that his son would die for right. that right. people. This is the, what is called the covenant of redemption. That is before the world ever was that mm. he decided to do that. And then he actually keeps that promise and sends his son to Calvary and Jesus dies on our behalf uh, in the greatest loving sacrifice that we have ever seen. Mm. And so we get a picture of what he's asking mm. for us um, in, in this, in this, in this uh, chapter. Yes, yes. Oh, man. It's good. Okay. <laughs> so the that was the uh, power of freedom, and this is the last section we want to go over, um, was the freedom. the freedom of promising. And I think this kind of gets into some of that philosophical <laughs> thing that you were talking <laughs> yeah, about yeah. Um, because – this is where the uh, the lady writes the article mm-hmm. and she and uh, at the end she she uh, is pointing out um, because this topic is about freedom. She points out the moment you are most free mm. is when you make uh, that promise, that right. oath, right. because um, you're saying despite whatever external impinges have mm-hmm. affected and created who I am today, despite any external um influence that is coming tomorrow right i promise yeah. to be there for you yeah and i'm not and me and my mom were talking to her she did a really good job of kind of like uh, even helping me to understand it um when i make that c- when i make that volitional commitment um it's in spite of uh my my genetic makeup it's right. in spite right. of my emotion i because like ultimately when we have in these these uh like they, he, she talked. You talked about the lady that had that affair, right? That, That's that, right. That, that, That's that right. affair. She had though. She was bound by her emotions and her affections. She was not actually free at that moment. She thinks she's free because she's having, she's doing what she thinks she wants to do. Right. But she is bound by her emotions. She's bound by uh, this desire to have some sort of free experience or this some sort mm-hmm. of uh, ecstatic experience. But the the more free we are is when we actually make a volitional decision, throw out all external mm-hmm. um, all mm-hmm. external pressures and external influences, and we say, I am committing myself to Charlene. I am committing myself to Kim. I am committing mm. myself to, to Kendra. I'm, and, and I am going to, regardless of everything else, live that out. Right. And right. you are never more free 
than you are in that moment when you make when you make that decision mm -hmm. and because we are constantly being impinged upon by external external forces mm -hmm. and you are saying despite, <laughs> despite all it. of those external right, for right, forces right. this one thing in my life won't 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 change and, and then like even in our christian walk rob we always say like stuff like oh well you know that's just the way that i am and mm -hmm. i have these mm -hmm. and, and we we bring we bring even even that idea to marriage well uh, this is, you know, this is who I am, this, this, that, the other. But what we say I in religion is like, I might, listen, I might be this genetically, I might be this emotionally, but that is not going to impinge on the fact that I am committed to this relationship right. and I am not going to allow any kind of external uh, pressures to, to change that. I'm free at that moment. This is what my true self desires to do that's you know right what I'm saying? that's right and and this and this work um I, I was just i was just telling my wife i'm like i know that i am weird mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so and i know it's gonna it can be kind of hard be, yeah. to deal with that right um but i am committed mm -hmm. um, yeah and like and i think uh, he he kind of points that out like the beauty of marriage and she she does it in that uh, i think it's windy what do you call Wendy Plump? Mm -hmm. um, she looks at her. She looks at her, her, uh, her, 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 her mother and her father who's been married for right. X amount of years, and, and she had lost her marriage because she was drawn away by the passions of, of electric Correct. sex uh, that, that she found in, um, in in a, in, a, in, a, in an affair. But she was like, "Yo, like that was awesome. Like that was awesome in the moment. Mm -hmm. That was awesome in the moment." And, but I rather, I, she says it here, uh, I don't want to mess it up. It says, uh, when you have an affair, you already know that the sex is going to be passionate. It's automatic. <laughs> That's automatic. <laughs> dude it's an it's it's adventure. It's not the sex. <laughs> it's the adventure. Right? Right. Right. She says this, though. Uh, um, if you were 75, she talked about her parents, w would you rather have years of steady Mm. If uh, occasionally strained devotion or something that looks a little bit like Iraq, the city of Iraq, uh, which is Fallujah, which is cratered with spent artillery. Right. She was like, no, I much rather have that um, that that love that steady, sometimes strained because you're weird. Thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're weird. You're odd. You right. know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm not I, I'm not all that Kim needs me to be. There's some straining there. Um, but I'd rather have that oh. than have lost it. Because I went and enjoyed myself it's for such a, two, three months. It's such a better story. The The story of the journey is so much more interesting. That's what he's mm -hmm. saying. It's just more, so much more fulfilling mm -hmm. than you to tell the story about how you stepped out on your, uh, on your marriage. Right. That, I mean, that's finding the moment. Mm -hmm. I guess we all like to hear about entanglements, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's not the that's not the story no, we want to hear in the end. Not at the end. That's Rob. not the interesting story. Not in when the you're end. old and gray, bro. Like I love. I don't know about you, but I love seeing those um those people that um like the old couples. Oh man! Like like you could tell they've been together. They got some for stories to tell. Forever. <laughs> Walking all like kind of like Granny and Bubba, they walking all slow, right. but they can finish each other. They can oh, finish they each other's sentences. They become each other. Like they Granny can go other. fix Papa's play that scissor without even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. uh, she knew what he wanted. Like that nasty goat milk. Like uh, that. Oh, <laughs> Neapolitan uh, ice yeah, cream. And, uh, like she, you could just. She knew what she knew. Jeffrey Lee yeah. Wilson. Yeah. I much rather that Rob than to say I got with some hot woman. And we had a good time for like right. two to three months. You know what I'm saying? That's right. that's not um, that passion it's is going to die out. It's not that interesting of a story. We know, we know, we know about that one, right? Um, okay, I think we hit that. We hit the mark. Um, anything else? I'm gonna uh, gonna go. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and uh, just remind you guys that you can give to Abundant Grace mm -hmm. Ministries. Um, like Sister as always says, don't be weary and well doing. <laughs> I know we we're, we're apart. Um, yes, thank you, uh, Boogie. To be continued. We'll come back with part two of this uh, chapter next week. Um, but you can give at agmla.org um, right there uh, at the top. There's a give button. Click that. You'll see the Tidly application 
or you might have it on your phone. Just search Abundant Grace Ministries in the Los Angeles area, and that should pop up. Um, go ahead and give that way. Um, we appreciate all the donations because I know sometimes they come from places that we yeah. do not expect. Yeah, yeah, and we do. Thank you for your giving, um, especially in a time like uh, COVID. But, um, man, uh, we want to be in prayer for each other because That's right. um, I think this isolation is starting to wear on um, just some of our some of the people in our congregation. Uh, just having conversations with some of you, I know it's feeling heavy, man. So. Uh, whenever we can, um, and it's safe to do so, man, reach out to each other, um, and uh, kind of be a li- be the lifeline to some of the saints because some of some folks are having a very difficult time with the separation. Right. It's heavy on them, so uh, I just want you guys to look out for those who you kind of feel like they're drowning um, in the solitude, man. Reach out to them. Um, because uh, this is, this is. He- you might have your family there. You may have everything rocking and rolling, mm-hmm. and life is just. Mm-hmm. But there's somebody in the congregation that is, that feels alone, and we don't want them to feel uh, feel alone. We don't want you to feel alone. So if that's you, uh, let us know, man. We'll reach out, bro. Yep, yep. So you can go ahead and pray for us. All right, uh, and like Brother Abe said, uh, he did a really good job, Sister Kendra. The slides. Yes. I saw him popping up. <laughs> Uh, Good job. We're going to have quite a few more on Sunday, but uh, you're going to do great. Um, and thank you guys all for tuning in, man. Uh, our platform is growing, and we're thankful. Yes. Right? Yes. We don't deserve it, but God is gracious and kind to us that you guys will want to hear <laughs> our, <laughs> our <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> what we got to say. Yeah. So we thank the Lord for you, and hopefully the Lord is blessing you through our ministry. So let's pray. <coughs> Father God, Lord, we thank you. And Lord, um, it's so easy sometimes to talk about these things. I, I even think about what we talked about on Sunday um, about um, um, the ministry of tables. And it's, sometimes these things flow off our tongue, especially as preachers and teachers, they flow off our tongue so easy. Uh, we can spin a phrase, Lord. But these are deep truths that we actually need help to live out. So, Lord, I'm praying that as we unpack this idea of this harmony between passion and duty, this idea of passion and practice in our marriage. Lord, I'm asking in Jesus' name that you would help us. This is not easy, Lord God, but we can do it because uh, you've given us the spirit of God. I love how logically this uh, argument is being made. We need the spirit of God to be able to do anything else that this book talks about, Lord. So we're asking you, Lord God, to fill us afresh. Somebody uh, needs it because their marriage is teetering. So I'm asking you in Jesus' name to fill them afresh and give them a heart to serve their mate and to and create in their relationship, Lord, this, this harmony between passion and duty. We love you. And, Father, we ask that you would... Uh, uh, take us home safely, those that need to go home and those that are home, that you will stay, that you will be with us and that if it be your will, we're wise in the morning Lord, we love you and we praise you and want to give you all glory, not to us Lord, but to your name be the glory, in Christ's name we pray Amen Amen. Thank you, um, I'm going to remind you to be with us on Sunday at 10.30am, we are continuing our journey through the book of Acts, Right. Um, chapter 6 now yeah, chapter 6, verses 8 through 15. Is okay. It. So we'll be on, by the time you preach, we'll be on chapter 7. Chapter 7, yeah. Right, right. Okay, so <laughs> join us on Sunday um, at 1030 a.m. And uh, as always, I guess I have to remind you to do two things. That is to love God. And each other. And each other. We will see you.